everybody, it's Ms. Peachy again from your WCA Biology B class. We are looking at Unit 3, Lesson 3, Cycling of Matter and Energy Flow. Titled very, very much similarly to um, Lesson 2. So Lesson 2, I believe, is just Cycling of Matter and Energy, and this one just adds flow at the end. So if you're confused at all, double check the, the title of the lesson. So our keywords here are biomass, gross primary productivity, net primary productivity, uh, photosynthesis, primary, syn or photos, let's try that again, photosynthesis, primary consumers, primary productivity, producers, and trophic level. Some of the terms are going to be familiar. They're repeats. And we have a couple of new ones. The first three on here are new to you. And so we will be going through those as well. Again, a reminder to go back and look at that note sheet. Huh? It's there for you. Gives you some extra helpful questions. So maybe you know what the key concepts are for the lesson. And hopefully it's a good organizational tool that you didn't have to create yourself, which is nice. So I'm going to go ahead and just zoom in on this because it's a little bit small. But it talks first about a term called biomass. And what does that mean? And we're going to talk kind of extensively about biomass in this lesson. What is biomass? It says biomass is the amount of organisms in a given area or volume in an ecosystem. So when we look at biomass, the amount of organisms, their bodies in a specific area or volume in an ecosystem. So we measure that. We can look at Certain organisms have a lot of biomass, like a tree. You know, forests have like a lot of biomass because they literally have a lot of mass to them. And some organisms, like a, a grassy field, is going to have less biomass. So we're not counting on numbers here. We're actually talking about the mass of the object. So keep that in mind with biomass. It's specifically referring to mass. So weight mass is important here. Types of biomass can be burned or digested to produce a type of energy. Like wood is biomass that we can burn to produce energy. Some other products that you can burn are things like gas, like methane is produced um, in landfills. When decomposition happens, they produce methane is produced. It's landfill gas, according to this write-up here. It is burned off. Alcohol fuels such as ethanol can be burned. Um, you see that as an additive in gasoline sometimes. Um, so these are all considered biomass. Plant biomass contains chemical energy from the sun that was stored during the process of photosynthesis. Photosynthesis makes sugar, glucose, but plants can't use all that sugar right away. So they oftentimes store it in longer storage molecules such as um, carbohydrates or cellulose. Those are complex, um, those complex molecules that allow for longer storage, right? And we talk about energy flows through an ecosystem. Autotrophs produce their own energy. Consumers or heterotrophs eat the autotrophs and energy moves from the uh, producer to the consumer, from the autotroph to the heterotroph. How fast producers make energy from the sun is known as primary productivity. So the primary reminds us that it comes from primary producers, which are our first level within an ecosystem. We can look at gross primary productivity, the total amount of material that is produced during photosynthesis. When I bring this over, this is the sheet that I made up. I also have something in here where I said net versus gross. These are terms that are used a lot of times in many different ways when we're looking at kind of totaling something up. Um, gross means including everything. And net is going to subtract. Um, it's like the total after you deal with anything that's been subtracted from it. A good example is your pay if you're making, um, you know, you, you're working. You have your gross pay and that's how much you are paid your wage that you get annually or hourly or whatever. Then you have taxes that get subtracted from your wages. You oftentimes have 
um, you know, other types of deductions that are subtracted from your wages, and you have a paycheck that you get, which is your net pay. So the amount that you get in your paycheck is minus all those other deductions, which are often taxes and things like that. That's your net pay, whereas the gross pay is what you were given before those deductions. So we can use that to kind of remember the difference between gross primary productivity and net primary productivity. Gross primary productivity is the total amount of material that's produced during photosynthesis. You were just to measure how much sugars and starches and stuff that are produced by plants, you can come up with gross primary productivity. However, plants need some of that to do their own stuff. They need to to do their own respiration, to use some of that, to be able to function and live as a plant. So you have to subtract the stuff that plants use, and then you come up with something called net primary productivity, which is what's left over after you subtract everything the plants use. They are specifically saying that you can look at respiration in plants, and that's what's subtracted. And I think that makes sense here. Because respiration is how plants are going to then take the sugars that they've made and use that to manufacture ATP for them to do their cell processes and all of the things that they need to do to grow and develop and everything to be a plant, right? So by looking at the gross primary productivity and subtracting what is used in respiration, we then can get net primary productivity. So G GPP minus respiration equals NPP, right? That's what they're saying here. So that's the difference between the gross and the net, and that's how you calculate them. Then it gives us a term um, that kind of gets a little confusing for people who don't have a background in science, very, you know, maybe that much of a background. But maybe you'll remember this a little bit from physical science. The units that are used here are joules per meter squared per day. And I just wanted to define what that means. So joules, the J here, is a unit of energy. You might remember that. We did do a calculation of energy back in physical science when you had to calculate kinetic energy and potential energy, and the units were always in joules. A joule is a newton meter. So it's, it's basically um, the energy it would take to raise an object that is one newton in weight a distance of one meter. It takes a certain amount of energy, and that's what a joule is. So this is the energy. Meter squared is the area, and day is the time. So per area, the amount of energy you use daily, or that the plant is uh, producing daily, that's what that unit actually translates into. Per given area, if we look at a specific area, the amount of energy that is being produced daily, so that's the units we use for G GPP and NPP. That's why we use that J slash M squared slash J. So otherwise units can get a little cumbersome sometimes, but I just want to make sure you understand that. The last thing they talk about is something called, often called the pyramid of energy. And the pyramid of energy is one example of a trophic pyramid. A trophic pyramid is going to show different levels of the pyramid based on different levels of organization. You have your producers, your primary consumers, your secondary consumers, your tertiary consumers, and your quaternary or final consumers up on top. What we're showing here is that the amount of energy that is available from one level to the next decreases very dramatically. You start with 2,500, you end up with 500, and then 50, and then 5, and then 0.5. I feel like this should actually say 5,000 here, so I think maybe um, that is an incorrect calculation because it should be 10% per level. Oh, so 10% of this would be 250. So we're going to say that this should say 5,000, and then Miss Peachy's going to write that one up too to get changed.
some mistakes that we see in here. Because generally what we say is that only 10% of the energy can be transferred from one trophic level to the next higher trophic level. So if you can imagine this as 5,000, 10% of 5,000 is 500. So that's what we see in the next level. 10% of 500 is 50. 10% of 50 is 5. And 10% of 5 is 0.5. So every time we increase one level in the trophic pyramid, the pyramid of energy, we have 10% of what we had previously available to be used. The remaining amount that is um, that 90% is lost during processes of cellular processes, during respiration, during digestion, during, it's lost as heat, it becomes waste. You can't tap into it to use for your energy reserves. So that's what the pyramid of energy is. Um, so that's everything for this section. And they give you some examples and some practice. Then it talks about biomass as a fuel source. And this is the second part of that sheet that I gave you. What is biomass? Well, it's energy from plants that can be a source of fuel. You can see it sometimes in gas stations. Um, it makes up percentage of your, your fuel. If you see, like, you've got the, I don't know, like 93%, then um, 7% of that can be ethanol, which is a, a type of biofuel. Um, and it has benefits because it's readily available, it's easy to manufacture, um, it's relatively clean when it is burned. I mean, it's not clean, but it's better than other types of fuels. But some of there are some drawbacks as well. Um, so when you look at the drawbacks, it does produce carbon dioxide, so it is not a carbon neutral process. So it may not be that much more beneficial than using other sources of energy. Uh, trees have the ability to store carbon, so if you cut down trees to then make biofuels, you're actually getting rid of a carbon sink. Remember, trees are a carbon sink or a carbon reservoir, so we don't want to get rid of them. So deforesting an area or cutting down trees is a negative effect on the whole carbon cycle. So not only are we burning them, but now we're getting rid of a place to store carbon. Um, with ethanol, combustion is incomplete, and this produces a substance known as black carbon, which increases climate change. And let's see, it can cause damage to engine uh, vehicle engines over time. It also, um, it isn't mentioned here, but it doesn't have as quite as much energy that is produced during combustion of, of uh, certain biofuels than gasoline, for example, if you're comparing like gasoline to ethanol. Um, ethanol doesn't have quite as much energy that is available to be used when you burn ethanol. And then finally, it says biofuels use plant and animal energy source that otherwise might be used as food. So if we're using corn, for example, to make ethanol, that corn can be food. So should we really be tapping into a food source to be able to produce um, gasoline or energy for burning for vehicles and stuff like that? So that's pretty much everything in this lesson. Thank you guys for tuning in. If you have questions, let me know. Otherwise, uh, we'll see you in the next one.